Boa tarde, na, na Rússia, na Ucrânia, boa noite. Estamos num momento extraordinário uh, e estamos privilegiados de estar conosco dois rabinos uh, importantes de Ucrânia que estão dentro da linha do fogo. Uh, eu preciso confessar que ontem, quando a gente decidiu fazer esta reunião, eu liguei para alguns rabinos, incluindo esses dois. Teve um rabino de Kiev que me falou que ia falar mas de repente cortaram tudo, tudo é, comunicações, ele não podia mais é, falar e eu sei que ele está na linha do fogo, é perigo mesmo. Então, enquanto nós estamos falando aqui, tem várias é, comunidades judaicas inteiras e vários rabinos, como as comunidades que estão é, nos ônibus tentando fugir dentro da linha de fogo e pediram que todos rezam por eles nesse momento tão crítico. Não é apenas uma situação de onde que alguma coisa está acontecendo, mas sabemos que eles estão na linha, linha do fogo nesse momento. Então, nós temos conosco o Rabino Nahum Erentrai, é, de cidade de, de Zaporiza. Na verdade, ele mesmo passou um milagre ontem, poucas horas atrás, os quase foi mortos pelos por, ucranianos, tiraram ele de carro, acharam que ele era espião, porque era depois da hora de curfew à noite. E temos também o Rabino Grissestein, também o mais um amigo meu, da cidade de Chernovitsi, pouco mais longe da fronteira, mas que é, milhares de pessoas estão passando pela cidade dele. Então, eu gostaria de começar com o Rabino eh, Nahum eh, Erentrai. Ele vai falar em inglês, eu vou eh, traduzir devagar. E eh, a história dele é incrível, está lá mesmo. É, hoje de manhã, algumas horas atrás, eu não sabia se vai conseguir entrar por causa de é, tiroteus do lado da casa dele. Harav é, Erentrain, tem o Liftor, could you please open your microphone and uh, talk to us? Uh, good evening. Okay. The microphone is open. You, can you hear me? Yes, we hear you. Okay, my name is Rabbi Nochem Erentrain. I am the Shliach in the city called Zaporozhye, Ukraine. Zaporozhye is located in southeast of Ukraine. We are here in Shlichest for 25 years, and we never, never, in our worst dream, we never thought that we'll come to such a disaster. Uh, it's not just a humanitarian uh, disaster, it's a real disaster what's going on here in Ukraine. The situation currently now, we sit in a basement uh, under my house with uh, people. And we are we are under a big attack of the Russian tanks. Every day, every minute, the situation is getting getting uh, changed. I wanted to mention a little bit to explain what is the what is all about it, and I mean to explain what is the beginning of the whole situation. Now, uh, I'll give just a very short translation. Ben dakal bikitsur, okay. He's, he's going to give, uh, Rabino Erentrai vai dar uma pequena uh, tradução como foi, até, como começou tudo na cidade dele e como está acontecendo, mudando cada minuto na, na terra, na frente da de casa dele. Continue. Vamos ir? Ken. So, eight years ago, 2014, the Russian authorities decided to take over Crim, Crimea, and we located in the south of east of Ukraine. We are the, the Shluchim, the nearest Shluchim on the way to the east, west east to uh, Krim, Crimea, uh, Lugansk, Donetsk. And as I said, eight years ago, they took over Crimea and uh, uh, Donetsk and Lugansk. For eight years was all uh, discussion here and there, but uh, they wanted to, Ukraine, they should be recognized as uh, this place, as a place which it's a Russian uh, or independent or a Russian uh, occupied. Ukraine, your city? No, uh, not on your my city. city. Donetsk. Um, Donetsk and Lugansk. I'm just going a little bit history for one minute and then to explain what's going on today. So it wasn't my city, it's the city of Donetsk and Lugansk, which are way 170 kilometers from my city. Ele disse que uh, oito anos atrás, 2014, quando entraram na Crimea e Donetsk, uh, do lado da cidade, ele e o Beit Chabad, a cidade mais próximo, 
e esses oito anos estão conversando se Donetsk e Crêmio se é Rússia ou não, uh, mas a guerra está mais do lado da cidade dele por os últimos oito anos. Agora ele vai chegar para agora. Então, uh, we, we thought that it's uh, going to finish by this. But the, uh, the problem, there was two problems. Uh, my city, Zaporozhye, gives the electricity to Crimea. And near Zaporozhye also, there was a big, big, very big um, uh, water. It's, a, it's not a sea, but it's going all over Ukraine, the Dnieper River. So the water from Zaporozhye and the electricity going to Crimea. And since they didn't have this opportunity, not straight from Zaporozhye, so Zaporozhye has a few towns before, And the water always went from when the times of Ukraine went to uh, Crimea. So they decided recently uh, that they want to get, uh, there was the all, uh, one of the biggest uh, political problem is Ukraine decide that they're going to go into NATO, which Russian didn't like this uh, matter. Why? Because they decide if they will have weapons here in Ukraine, this side of Ukraine with NATO, So then they were sitting on the Russians' uh, authorities, on the Russians' uh, earth, and they can, uh, they can, with weapons or anything, to get to Russians' uh, uh, side. So there was a whole big uh, discussion about it, but Ukraine decided that they're not going to listen to the Russian, uh, to the Russian president, uh, Mr. Putin. And uh, they started the negotiation. There was no negotiation because I am not a political, I'm a just a rabbi, but we came now recently, a political, not a political, a rabbi, a consul. Hello? Lo shomim otcha. Which we never been in because of the situation. All the... He said that the city of Zaporozhye ele, eles passavam energia e água para toda a Crimeia que foi conquistado pela Rússia. Então, e, então se dá, por isso a cidade dele é tão perigosa, tão na mira de Putin. Ele falou, agora a guerra começou porque a é, Ucrânia queria entrar na OTAN, que ia colocar mísseis e tudo de, de, de outros países do lado da Rússia, a Rússia não queria. E ele falou, ele não é homem de política, mas infelizmente nessa, nessa situação o Rabino virou político, é, 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 conselheiro é, ajudando todos os tipos de coisas que estão acontecendo ok então se eu não me engano o que está acontecendo agora? os russos colocaram tanques ao redor da Ucrânia e como nós pensamos, nós sabemos que a armada russa a armada ucraniana é como um elefante e um pequeno cote ok, então eles estão And right away, they said at the beginning, they're just going to stay. They're not going to do anything. And last week, they started to move on. We are sure, the whole, I mean, it's, uh, it's not a new thing that we were being sure that when the Russian would be deciding to move to Ukraine it's, until Kiev, it could happen just by one or two days, which it didn't happen. So they started to do to to go to our region. My region is going Militopol, Bridyansk, and then Rostov. From my region to Rostov, it's 80 kilometers. From my region, from my city, Zaporozhye, to Bridyansk, it's two, 220 kilometers. Why I'm saying that to, I, to explain what's what's happened. They bring the they bring the, the, the uh, moved the tanks, and as they go with the tanks, they're also going with uh, with scud missiles. I mean, they uh, they starting to shoot missiles and then they start to shoot with the tanks. The in Russian your army, city, in your uh, city, but in, in that's your city, what my city now. But before, I'm saying I'm talking about three days ago, four days ago. Tá, tá. Ele falou que os russos começaram com tanques, fizeram cerca das cidades lá. Todo mundo achou que vai demorar dois dias para eles entrarem em Kiev, mas, uh, mas por enquanto não. No início começaram a jogar mísseis, uh, no início as cidades mais longe, e nesses dias começaram já da própria cidade dele, ok? Mas a Ucrânia não... The Ukraine, the Russian army did not know that the Ukrainians are very big fighters. They're going to fight for their own uh, place. 
So they uh, started to have a war between the army of Russia and Ukraine. And the army of Russia didn't know that they have, um, uh, they have such a willing to fight and to do the war that they started to give them back. So then they moved to, first of all, to the first city, Bridyansk. They took over this city. But they had also a lot, they, they pinched them. There was a lot, a lot of people which get killed from the, uh, from the Russian army and tanks and so on. But in a few, two days, they took over Bridyansk. Do you know anyone that was killed? Uh, there is people which got killed. Many, one of the problems here, they don't let any news, uh, any news reporters to come in. And I will tell you what happened with me. Uh, it was exactly two days ago. Currently, o que aconteceu com ele faz dois dias atrás. Isso vai dar para entender como está, o que está acontecendo na rua. Ele falou que lá não deixam eh, o mídia, não deixam mandar notícia. Mas dois dias atrás ele foi pego pelos ucranianos. Aqui a gente pode entender o que está acontecendo. What happened with you? Uh, recently, we have uh, the Ukrainian staying in the city. They have like uh, blocks, uh, block uh, places like a post, which you have to you have to you have to stay. So the problem is currently now. I went in the city from one one place to the other place. Uh, we have a school in the beginning of the city, and my mashgiach couldn't go to the school because of the situation. So I have a car, so I'm trying to move to on to the other side of the city. As I'm moving to the other side of the city, and uh, everything was okay in the first way. When I came back, uh, they asked me to stop. Uh, they having very big, uh, like from metal, the the uh, like a post which you cannot go over. You have to go. Who has to stop? Ukrainians. Ukrainians, yes. He said that a two days ago he needed to take food in the school. Is there a school? How many kids are in your school? I have 150 children. We have here uh, 50 children in the kindergarten. We have a community about uh, 10,000 Jews. Eles têm 10 mil judeus lá, 150 crianças na escola e 50 crianças no pré-escola. E ele estava indo para a escola para pegar comida. E ele falou, na ida foi tudo bem, mas na volta os ucranianos, os próprios ucranianos, colocaram bloqueios no meio da cidade para ver quem está passando e quem não está passando. Ok, então, so, uh, on the way back... Na Parroja, você deve entender que uh, o lugar é mais grande do que Israel. Israel. They're for a place, and it's a million people population. Out of a million, we have 10,000 Jews, which we know, and uh, in the cities around uh, Zaporozhye, as I said, Bridyansk and Militopol, that they are already occupied by the Russian army, uh, there's another few thousand. We're now connecting with these people, which they live in the other cities. Uh, they told me, I'm getting reported, not true reporters, I'm getting reported by uh, people which they live in that in, in this city of Bridyansk and Zaporozhye. And, uh, então, Bridyansk... então, ele tem 10 mil judeus na comunidade dele, e uma população de 1 milhão, são 10 mil judeus, e na cidade do lado, mais alguns milhares, que ele é responsável da cidade do lado. Na cidade do lado, já, os russos já entraram. Então, e ele recebe as notícias direto da comunidade, dos judeus lá, não do mídia. Então, ele é responsável de todos eles, eles estão em contato direto com ele. So, let's go back to the story. You were going to the, to the school, you were coming back to the... Where were you coming back? To the school? To the other side of the... I, I, my mother uh, couldn't go. And uh, so what happened was... Uh, what happened was I came to the school and I made the, I was turning the fire and I made everything should be kosher because we're preparing now every day for five, six hundred people which they in the school in the basement of the school. So I came back to the city and uh, they asked me to stop and I didn't see, I didn't hear because my car was closed, the windows, I didn't hear. So I went through. By the way, they stopped me. I went out and they screaming, go out of the car. I'm going out of the car. By the way, they start to shoot. They were shooting uh, not just one, a few, a few things from different places. They shoot from the, from from, from to the uh, to the up and then also to the sides. And then I was screaming, and somebody screams, "This is somebody from Chechnya," because I look at my beard, Abyss Lazivian, 
<laughs> unfortunately, I look like a Chechen because now the Russian is sending many, many Chechens because they are very, very big fighters. So they thought I'm a Chechen, so they wanted to kill me. So I was screaming, I'm a Jew, I'm the Arab. So the problem is that they couldn't believe me anything. So uh, then they asked me to pull então, down... Ele disse que ele tiraram, ele estava dirigindo, eles gritaram, falaram para ele parar, ele não percebeu, tudo estava fechado, então começaram a gritar no, no alto-falante, sai de carro. Ele saiu, começaram a tirar, ele falou, não de uma geração, mas de várias gerações, e acharam que ele de Chechnya, que tem barba, não sei o que, e hoje tem grupos pequenos de Chechnya tentando infiltrar as cidades, então eles acharam que ele é um deles, então botaram ele no chão e é, ele começou a gritar, So I was What screaming, I was screaming, I'm a rabbi, I am from Israel, in Russian, I was screaming, I'm not from Chechen. They told me they don't kill nothing. Put yourself on the pole, in the floor, with the hands with the, from the other side. And and they were shooting all the time. They told me if you're moving, you're getting in your head or in your foot, uh, they're going to shoot me. And then I took out my I'm muzzle that I have... Uh, I have my passport, my Israeli passport and the Ukrainian passport, and I threw it to the other side. And somebody, Bo Hashem, finally, I don't know who, he saw that I'm Israeli. So they said, don't shoot more. Let's wait what to see. Okay, ele so... Que ele botaram ele no chão e ele gritou, sou rabino, sou rabino. E uh, até que ele lembrou que ele tinha passaporte israelense e, e ele jogou para ele seu passaporte israelense. E alguém olhou e falou, calma, para de atirar. Vamos ver, ok? And in the meantime, you can imagine that I scream Shema Yisrael Hashem Echad. I couldn't have even a, a second to say something else. And I was screaming so from Etzem Anefesh, I mean from the deep of Moyar, so such a screams. I'm a rabbi, I live, I have seven children, let me live, what do you want? They didn't kill nothing, they didn't believe me. Then they pulled me over to a jeep with uh, four guns from all the sides, and they took me over for uh, investigation. And they told então, me ele estava gritando russo, eu sou rabino, tem sete filhos, por favor, me deixa viver, gritando Shema Israel. Eles botaram ele num jeep com quatro pessoas de armas e levaram ele para para o central da de polícia para investigar. Yeah? So they took me to investigation inside, so I went inside with the... Ah, they took me away the telephone also. They wanted to see if I'm a spion or a Chechnya, so maybe I came to see what's going on with the, with the Ukrainian authorities. Then I went into the building, uh, was very, very scary for sure. And there was an invest investigator. So there was two investigators. One was busy and the other one was, uh, wasn't busy. So they put me in a room and he started to ask me questions. So I, I explained to him, I live here, maybe you saw me on the television. I'm very known person in the city. So he said, okay, but I don't know exactly who are you. Uh, I hear about you, but I don't. So he called the other guy from the room And Bo Hashem, the other guy, once, I don't know where, we saw each other in the, uh, by, the, by the Oblis or somewhere, I met with him. So he gives me a hug and told me, what, do you, what are you doing? So oh. I explained to him, to kill me. So he said, Rabbi, uh, you know, now with your beard, you have two options. Either you, you God forbidden, you're taking out your beard, either you should stay home or either in the synagogue. Don't go anywhere because now is a situation with the Chechenian. They're looking each and every one. They see somebody with a. Lakhoto, eles pegaram ele e levaram para uma investigação. E o cara começou a fazer perguntas. Ele falou: Olha, eu sou famoso aqui sempre na televisão, no cabelo da cidade. Mas ele falou: Não, escutei, mas não conheço. Aí, de repente, ele chamou outro investigador do lado, ele entrou e ele tinha encontrado o cabelo um tempo atrás. Eu não lembro onde. Aí ele deu um abraço para Rabino, o que você está fazendo aqui? E ele falou que eles querem me matar. Ele falou, olha, agora com a situação de Chechnya, você tem duas opções. Ou você esconde a barba, tira a barba, Deus nos livre, ele disse, ou se esconde na sinagoga e não sai, porque é perigoso sair. Rabbi, is it dangerous to go out only by night or by day all the time? I will tell you, by day, at least you can see yourself, somebody can see me, and I, I'm just going now from the shul, To the, from my house to the synagogue, just go to the office and to say till him. That's as till this morning. But the situation is that they gave out about 2,000 guns uh, this week to Ukrainian people. 
And you understand, like uh, when 2,000 people, uh, nobody knows which uh, which one is a normal one. And it looks like a jungle. And they ask everyone if they want to have uh, guns or weapons. They're ready to take them to the, not to the army, to, they should be watching the city. And as currently okay. now, after they moved from Milletopol, they moved to a city called Energadal. There's, after, there's a place, there was a Kura Atomi, Atom and uh, Stansen. Adam, uh, Adam pl planted the atom, the bomb atomica. And uh, they, yeah. uh, they're looking now to have all the, the places of their strategic. Uh, I mean, where's the, uh, there's in Ukraine too, a few places, very, very uh, strategic, like in Kiev, Chernobyl, near Kiev, there's Chernobyl. So this they took over already. And then they came to the city called Nergada, which is 60 uh, kilometers away from my city. Uh, there was a big war for two days there. Very, very, a lot of people have been killed from the Russian side and also for the Ukrainian. We never, never thought that the Ukrainian will have such a patriotism to fight and to go on and to go on. But so now, the, now you're not going anymore out of the house, even to the shul? Yeah, from today I'm not going because there's a... There is a racket of flying in inside this inside the city. Ele disse que uh, até hoje de manhã ele ia da casa para a sinagoga só. No dia ele podia pouco sair porque dá para ver que não de Chechnya. Então ele ia da casa para a sinagoga e volta. Mas a partir de hoje já não sai mais de casa porque os russos eles queriam pegar duas dois lugares uh, estratégicos onde tem uh, coisa de, de bomba atômica. Um é Chernobyl que já pegaram. E outro é, é Nargadá, que é 60 quilômetros da casa dele. Então, ele falou, e lá teve grandes guerras. E essa semana, os, russos, os ucranianos distribuíram 2 mil armas para pessoas que moram lá na, na cidade dele. Ele falou, então, não tem, você não sabe quem está com arma, quem está contra quem. Então, o perigo é muito grande para sair na rua agora. Então, ele não sai mais. The synagogue is not working anymore. The synagogue is working, but tomorrow we'll see what's going to be, if it's going to be quiet, because now it's flying, flying uh, some uh, scud missiles, we hear bombs and we the silence. So I don't know what will be tomorrow morning. I, will, I have uh, very good connections with the army bases, Ukrainian, that they let me know exactly where it's flying and which places. So I will see tomorrow morning the update. As for now, they, want, they were trying also to take over Zaporozhye airport. There's a new airport in Zaporozhye. After the neck down, uh, the Russian authorities, all the airports in Ukraine, Kiev, Odessa, uh, and all over uh, Kharkov, they now was trying to do a fight and a big war with Zaporozhye airport. But Baruch Hashem, finally, as for now, there was big, the war is still going on. They're very, very serious. I know the head of the airport, and he, he gives me updates all every few hours what's going on. But they knocked one uh, one polis of the one uh, side of the uh, of the airport, but they couldn't. And also, the Ukrainian army killed about uh, these two days ago, uh, two days, the last two days, about 200 uh, soldiers and about 10 tank, tanks, uh, Russian tanks. Uh, they killed them. So the Russian moved back like 20 kilometers away yesterday. Wow, wow. Então, ele disse uh, que amanhã ele vai ver se vai ter sinagoga. Ele tem ligações com a pessoa do exército local e ele avisa ele direto quando, uh, te, onde tem uh, bombas, onde é mais perigoso. Uh, e ele falou que tem o único aeroporto que os uh, russos ainda ainda deixaram tudo na Ucrânia é na cidade dele. Uh, e, e dois dias atrás teve guerra, briga lá, tentaram pegar... Ele falou os ucranianos mataram 200 soldados russos e 10 tanques, e os russos saíram é, é, alguns quilômetros de lá, e o chefe de, de aeroporto está ligado com ele e avisa ele como está acontecendo. Ok. Rabbi, the next, how many... Yeah. The next day, what they did, they took Russian soldiers, took clothes from the Ukrainian army, and they made like they're coming to them, like to help them. And they killed a lot of soldiers because of that. Because uh, 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 they, they should uh, um, 
all of they sh they shoot one of the other until they got the message that not the message till they understand that it's Russian soldiers took a while. So therefore, today they came yesterday they came more close to Zaporozhye, and because of the they thought you only came as Russians to attack the Ukrainians and they started to shoot. And the more the Ukrainians were tendering, they started shooting to protect them. So they killed a lot of Ukrainians. É, ótima noite, chegaram de volta um pouco mais próximo da cidade dele. Yeah. So, the meantime, they moved uh, more to Zaporozhye, towards Zaporozhye, and they started to shoot uh, raquetas uh, on, the, uh, on the first houses, which are uh, beginning of Zaporozhye. What's the, why do they want to take Zaporozhye? Because they want to take Zaporozhye and they have a, star, a straight uh, line from Zaporozhye to Kharkov, and then they have like uh, the coding Ukraine of uh, F of the map. So they will have one uh, Zaporozhye. There is a big, big uh, highway called Moskva Simferopol, which used to go till Simferopol. So actually, they want to take over the airport and to make a way till Kharkov and till the, the sea of uh, Odessa. So then they, they took, they, they wanted to take over. A big part of Ukraine from this side. That's what they're doing now. He said, "What they are doing now, just in the city of his, the city of his is Zaporozhye." He said that they want to take Zaporozhye because there is a direct line to Kharkov, and there is a big area, and so they can cut Ukraine in two. There is also a big road that goes directly, and the strategy is big. They want to take the only. Aeroporto que sobrou, que também está na cidade dele, e chegar assim também até o mar da Odessa, isso vai estrategicamente e vai ser muito bom. Para esse, uh, Rabbi, uh, how many Jews are still in your city? Quantos judeus ainda estão lá na sua cidade? For now, we have still, which we know exactly about 6,000, uh, a few thousand left already, but there is still 6,000. So I, now I wanted to go to the community section. And uh, so we have in the community, we have a very, uh, not just to say good, but a very active community and we're helping a lot of people. We having, as we build a new shul about 10 years ago, a nice big shul, huge shul, which will be built by the money of Ukrainian people, Ukrainian rich people. So people which they live near the shul and around the shul came to, the, to be like in a basement to keep themselves from the shooting because there's silence all the way in the morning at night. Now there's silence. So uh, what happened was uh, recently a lot, a lot of not Jewish people uh, also asked me begging, it looks like a catastrophe. Uh, you know, if you read a lot of people, a lot of things about the Holocaust, when people are running from bombs, it looks exactly the people here likes like everyone to have dogs and uh, cut and fish. Uh, so the small children of uh, babies of a month or two months uh, and children from any any uh, ages, uh, they were, came into the shul and they're staying there for sometimes 24 hours, sometimes 15 hours. And it looks like now I can say that it's like in the Teivat Noach with somebody, with someone's, uh, with people, which they, uh, at least the, the, the dogs did not fight each other. Those big ones, small ones. So we have the all mixed up. Ele falou que uh, dos 10 mil judeus de, de cidade dele, uh, sobrou 6 mil, 4 mil já conseguiram fugir. E ele falou que uma que lá, uma comunidade muito ativa, 10 anos atrás construiu uma sinagoga enorme e linda, com dinheiro local, e agora todo mundo chegou para a sinagoga. Mas também muito não judeu ploraram para ele, que eles querem entrar, precisam de um lugar. Ele falou a cena exatamente como no Holocausto, quando você vê pessoas fugindo, correndo com uma sacola, pegando uma coisa e, e levando o que eles podem levar. Ele disse que muita criança levaram um pet, é, cachorrinho, é, peixe, ele falou, agora a sinagoga dele parece um é, arca de Noé, que tem vários tipos de animais e pessoas, judeus e não judeus. Ele falou, é, 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 e dá todo mundo lá juntos. And uh, as a rabbi, I feel not just to be a spiritual rabbi, when the people came in to... What will be 
is it? If uh, some Jewish people wanted to go to a basement of not Jewish place, so my play dark Sholem, I couldn't, my heart couldn't let me not to give them. And uh, the way it's, it's doc charity is not just for to help for material, but to help to people to Jewish and not Jewish too. That's one of our our shlichut. So we yeah, are the uh, you have place you have place for everyone. Oh, so now I'll explain. So I told them that I don't have enough place for everyone and for the Jewish community. So they told me, they said, you know what? We are sure in the synagogue will feel safe. Let us be in the apps in the main zal, in the main shul. And we will stay safe there because it's, uh, we're sure that they're not gonna, gonna knock down a shul. Ele disse que uh, uh, os, os não judeus imploraram e ele falou não tem espaço para todo mundo. E ele disse que ele achou, olha, Imagina que fosse judeu fugindo. A gente espera que não judeu deixa abre a porta e deixa o judeu entrar. Então ele, como judeu, também tem que deixar não judeu entrar, óbvio, mas não tinha espaço para a cidade inteira. Ele falou para eles, onde? Eles falaram, se não pode ir no bunker, no basement, embaixo, a gente quer ficar na sinagoga, a gente acredita que lá vamos ser mais protegido. A gente acredita que os russos não vão bombear uma sinagoga. Então, ele falou que muito judeu, não judeu, está acima na sinagoga grande e também embaixo no bunker também. And they also let me know that uh, if you, we are one family, our, uh, what's going to be happen with you will happen with us. So we are one, like we, we there's no difference between you Jewish or Ukrainian. You have to know that we love the Jewish people and we want to be near to the Jewish people. And it was, was a big Kiddush Hashem that we making, even still now in the basement, I'm right now in the basement of my house, but in Shul there's a few hundred people which are hiding in the basement and upstairs uh, currently now. Besides ele, that, we... Ele disse que uh, tzedakah é também para assuntos materiais, não só espirituais, e também para não judeus. Ele falou que neste momento tem centenas de judeus e não judeus na casa de, da, da sinagoga, e eles estão uh, sentindo, eles falam que nós somos uma família, e o que acontece que nós vai acontecer com vocês também, estamos juntos nisso. Ok? So, so people ask me, why you didn't go away from here, if it's a, such, a, a, such a place, danger place. Porque ele não so, vai embora, yeah? So I said like this, my, uh, we are as a shliach, uh, we are like it's a, a capitan, a carbanit of a ship, of a boat, that you can, even it's going shaking from all the side, the main thing of a shliach, of the rabbi, you have to be, you have to, even it's going shaky, this boat, you have to make a balance and to and not to throw the boat and to go away. So we are helping with uh, many, many products. We're giving uh, products to people because the stores right now, there's nothing, people bought everything. But since we have a connection with supplies, because we're giving out food all year, and we have a kindergarten, so we have connection with these suppliers. So we bought a lot, a lot of food, and we're giving now every day for hundreds of people from the community. And even now, there was unfortunately needs for not Jewish people because my heart is broken when people are coming and they said we're going to die from, uh, uh, we're not going to have what have food because in a few days it's impossible to be uh, anything with uh, food because there's no food. Of uh, to get in the stores, and therefore we saw ourselves to help to each and every one. They should have for at least two weeks in the house food in case when the Russian will come in. Uh, they going into us. They went into a city from Militopol. They breaking the stores and they making like bizarre. There's no, there's nothing. They went into the banks and to the stores and destroying everything, shooting. Rabbi. How much, where do you get food from? How do you get food? If the stores don't have I, food. I, I have connection with the person which they have uh, supplies, they have uh, machsanim. They have big ah, uh, machsanim. Of... Okay, I understood. Ele disse que, uh, aliás, eu quero falar, vou tentar depois, ele mandou alguns vídeos de hoje de manhã, de milhares de pessoas, centenas de pessoas na sinagoga, você vê criança no berço, é, é incrível. Ele disse que lá não tem mais comida, Uh, porque os pessoas perguntaram por que ele não vai embora. Ele falou ele se sente como o de Reba, como capitão de um navio, que é o último para sair. E ele tem que estar lá para cuidar e ajudar. Ele falou, ele sempre, é onde tem comida, lá as lojas não tem mais comida. Ele falou que os russos, as cidades de lado, 
Metropol e outros, eles entram, destruem tudo, pegam todas as, as lojas e outras lojas, e falou, mas ele, ele o ano inteiro ele trabalha com comida para dar para pobres, etc. Então, ele tem ligação com os grandes uh, fornecedores. Então, ele está recebendo caixa de caixas e guardando para, se os russos entram, ele vai ter para pelo menos duas semanas. Ok? So now we staying in the middle of the war and uh, so the problem is that the bank system, the credit cards, the banks not working anymore. So what I have to do, I have to pay by cash. So how I'm getting cash, there's, uh, we know all the supplies for years and also there's some even not Jewish people which they have cash, but they are very afraid that this cash will be nothing. In a day or two, they're coming into Zaporozhye, everything will be gone. So what they do is they ready to own me money. I should buy food. And instead that they, they owe me money that I will give this back, whatever, in, the, in El Cisol or whatever, in any place. So therefore, we made a campaign which people can give us money. And then I know how much money I have. And then I can own money and to buy wow. with the cash food. He said that there are people there who are afraid that tomorrow the money doesn't go away. If the Russians enter, they don't have to buy, they don't have to do the lojas. Então, eles falam para ele, você compra e você paga de, para nós de volta, a gente vai ver onde, em Israel, outro lugar, em alguns dias. Então, ele falou, quando ele sabe que tem esse dinheiro, ele pode pre- pegar comida, sabendo que vai ter onde pagar de volta. Que, aliás, eu coloquei no chat, aqui, aqui eu vou colocar de novo, uma conta que pode ir direto para ele. Eu, eu coloquei três é, contas, um direto para ele, um para outro rabino que vai falar, e um para outro que eu mandei já alguns dias atrás, do Odessa, que tem um orfanato. Então, ele falou que quando ele sabe quanto dinheiro tem e tudo que entra, ele sabe quanto que tem, ele pode pegar crédito com esses fornecedores que querem dar para ele, porque eles não têm... Ninguém vai pagar. E depois eles vão pegar dinheiro dele é, depois. Uau. So, currently now, we start, we are, I'm a rabbi, we have a, you have to be a spiritual, a shliach of the rabbi, to do all, everything. Besides us, I'm a consul, I'm a embassy, And I'm, uh, I have to be like doctor to help with medication for people because the joint, Sochnut, Consul, everyone left the city. There's nobody, there's no outsiders. We are the only outsiders here in the city right now. Me and my wife and my older son and my uh, Enikl, my grandchild, which is three months now. He said that he became a rabbino, a medical, ele tem que dar eh, eh, medicina para as pessoas, cônsul e o sohnut, e todo mundo já saiu. Então, ele é o único, ele, esposa, e tem neto lá de dois meses, eh, tem que fornecer e fazer tudo. Can I ask you a, a quick question, uh, uh, Shalot e Shirot? Your family, a mishpacha, sua família, eles apoiam você, sua família em Israel. Your family in Israel, they let you there, they, they support you? Uh, they support yeah. me, but I will explain what's afraid? coming. They're very, very afraid. Currently now, we came to a place, a day, we have now maybe a day or a day and something that we can evacuate people outside Ukraine. So today I went, I had a meeting with the head of these trains of all over Ukraine, all over Zaporozhye, to take a train and to put a few hundred people or a few hundred families and to take them over either to Lvov and from there to Poland and to Israel or to some other places. So this, today I was working, but there's two problems to do it. To vacate people here from Zaporozhye, there's a problem, A, with the army of Ukrainian, because they're shooting. And also there's a problem with the Russian, they're shooting. So now we monitor, we're working with very, very big connections from the Russian government and from the Ukrainian government. They should let the, the if we're getting a train now, the, to let to go, uh, Uh, a train from Zaporozhye straight to Odessa or either straight to Lvov, which is 24 hours by train. Now, I was today by the train. It looks like exactly when the Nazis came to a city, people are, there's a few trains which are leaving. And in a place which you have to be uh, like uh, 100 people becoming like uh, 500 people, it looks exactly as the, the way which happened in the times of the Holocaust. You, you're working all, with Russians all, also? The Russians are working with you? Not with me, but we, we monitor. We're trying to, through Israel, through Minister, through, through Bennett, we're trying through any, any 
uh, ways that we can do to take out away from here. Nesse momento, nesse momento, está trabalhando com o chefe das trens. Está hoje ele foi lá tentando organizar um trem que vai levar alguns centenas de famílias eh, ou para Lúv, para Polônia ou para outro lugar, 24 horas de, de viagem de trem. Ele falou: tem dois problemas: os ucranianos estão atirando, os russos estão atirando. E ele foi, ele foi hoje na estação de trem, parece como o Holocausto. Eh, milha, 500 pessoas entraram no trem, tem espaço para 100. E ele disse que ele está trabalhando com o governo de Israel, tentando negociar entre Rússia e Ucrânia para deixar um trem sair. E essa é que ele está fazendo uh, hoje e esses dias. Uau! We feeling now as uh, in middle of, uh, of the month of Tishri. We are now in Hedish order, but in this morning we said Avido Malkeinu and we said Shema Koleinu and was blowing Shafer too. And now, tonight, we're feeling in the Neila because it's a time which wow. I don't know what's going to be in a day, what's going to be, how, as what I can ask you for. At now. The fall, I'm mute, I'm mute. I'm mute. To put a person with a with a person doesn't put feeling. If a lady will, each and every one of you, if you will take upon of yourself to benefit for the Jewish in Ukraine, that will be a very, very, put a pen in uh, its docker. So always as the Rebbe taught you, uh, that you have to be marbe teure to fill its docker. So this could help, and I'm sure in this, that it will help for our community, not just for our community, all the Jewish communities in Ukraine and to the whole Ukrainian nation, not because nation, because it should be good for everyone. So what my, uh, my personal uh, asking is willing that if it's possible, each and every one to do a mitzvah and to do to say a capital tilim, that's the spiritual help which will, uh, we're sure that through this, which a lot of people all over the world uh, davening and asking Hashem, that will help us to, to be strength. עוד דקה, נגיד תהילו, אולי אתה יכול להגיד מזמור לדוד, 23 ביחד. אלי דיסי כי פרעליס, פרעלסי לא שלם כיפור. עוד שני מניעה פיזרון, הובינו מלכנו לסינגוגה, תוקרו שופר, לזרו כל הקורסון. אלי מפלו אנטיס, כי אלי מזמו פייס הברכה הגומל, פרלגן כי פס הפריגו, פורקז הכי לי פסו אונטם. ועוד שני הנוי שלי סיסנטי לה כמו נעילה, נגיע סבי כבר כותסר את מומנטו דה פיקי. E ele falou que o único que a gente pode fazer quando ele sente que estamos rezando juntos, mais um judeu coloca tefilim, mais uma mulher acende velas, o mérito dele se se sentem abraçados. Obviamente, ele não mencionou, mas cada um pode é, doar direto para o que eles estão fazendo lá. Uh, Rabbi, do we feel anti-Semitism in the streets from the Ukrainians? I would say so, now, now there's no, no anti-Semitism because everyone feels the Zelber Goyrel. The same thing will happen with them, will happen with us. So we are now very units. <laughs> that's, that's for the moment. Ele falou, But no momento... Very... No momento está muito bom, né? não tem antispitismo, porque todo mundo se sente junto na mesma navio, o que acontece com eles vai acontecer com, com os outros. Então, neste momento, está todo mundo unidos. Mas o que acontece depois, isso não dá para saber. Yeah? But What's we are thing? very afraid. In about a week, what? Yeah, yeah, continue. Uh, we, we are very afraid that in a week from now, 10 days maximum, we'll finish the food in this, not in the stores, even in the, in the machsanim, won't be any possibility to get more food. And the, the Russian was about just to come in. And if they're coming into the city, will be a big uh, house, toy vavoy. Uh, they will uh, break into the stores and they can come inside the houses to look for food. And this is one of the biggest thing which we never thought which will be a time, not just to shoot, to shoot uh, with guns. The fight is also with the, with the planes. So, uh, not right now, currently not with planes, but with the SCAD missiles, which is flying. Which we never, which we never thought that uh, we will get here in Ukraine such as scud missiles, and uh, to destroy, and all world is staying and making sanctions and garnished, and they saying no, 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 Putin. Ele disse que agora está calmo o antisemitismo, mas o grande medo é 
que daqui em 10 dias os, uh, acaba tudo a comida da cidade, os russos entram, quando eles entram, eles quebram todas as lojas, eles também procuram comida, eles podem entrar nas casas e pegar comida, e pode ser caos total, e uh, agora só, só com armas aqui pouco, e, 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 e mísseis aqui pouco, como aviões, e o perigo pode ficar muito, muito pior. Uh, Atama Kir Mishu, do you know somebody that was hurt from your community? Conhece alguém da sua comunidade que foi uh, machucado? I will tell you, the problem is that the community, uh, as for now, I didn't hear, but I have people in the other cities, which, uh, yeah, there is people which they heard. We're trying to help them also from this side to send them money. And uh, we didn't, might be there's a few people, soldiers from our community went yesterday to the front. We all hope that they will come back for uh, But as for now, we don't know exactly if the, there's, there's Baruch Hashem finally now, There's no such a, a news about people of our community from us. But we all, we, we're not taking any side of, uh, in this war to the side of Russian or Ukrainian. But we have to understand that the world is uh, like all global. And if some, if here it's going to be some weapons uh, activities so, uh, or atom, uh, so that it's not going to be just our problem. So be problem of all Europe. So May Hashem send us bigger. Uh, I'm getting a phone call. I'm very, very. I'm sorry that I have to go off the line. I'll come later. Okay. Uh, ele disse que uh, na cidade oh. dele não conhece alguém que se machucou, mas a uh, cidade do lado uh, ele escutou de feridos e uh, alguns membros da comunidade dele e soldados foram sim para 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 fronto e eles não sabem como estão agora. Ele falou, agora o perigo é se essa escala... Tudo... Ah? Pode ser? Então, todo mundo pode sofrer. Uh, nesse momento, parece que ele saiu. Uh, infelizmente, a gente não sabe como a situação lá está realmente... Uh, qualquer minuto, qualquer coisa pode acontecer. Uh, tem outro rabino da cidade, uh, de cidade um pouco mais longe de Sharon Vitsi, que também está conosco, vamos fazer bem rápido com ele, mas uh, eu queria antes falar o Salmo uh, juntos, uh, acho que é muito importante para eles sa saberem que nós estamos rezando para eles e para nós, e a reza tem a força, isso, cada um de nós tem que fazer algo, a gente não é Alan Musk, que podemos colocar colocar satellite, mas o que podemos fazer sim é fazer uma reza e para eles saberem que estamos fazendo uma reza. Desculpe, espero que estão ouvindo, eu vou começar de novo. Mismor Le David, Adonai Roi Lo Echsar, Bin Ot Deshe Yarbitseni, Ao Meir Menuchot Yenahaleni, Nafshi Yeshovev, Yanheni, Bemagle Tzedek, Leman Shemo, Gam Ki Elech, Begeit Samavet, Lo Irara, Ki Ata Imadi, Shiftecha, Omishatecha, Heima Yenachamuni, Taroch Lefanai Shulchan, Neged Sorerai, Dishanta Vashemen Roshi, Kosi Revaya, Ach Tovachese Gidofuni, Kol Yemei Chayai, Vishafti Bevet Adonai, Loorech Yamim. Uh, obrigado. Nesse momento, estamos aqui o amigo Rabino Glitzstein. Uh, ele está do lado, na cidade de Chernovitsi. Centenas de pessoas estão indo para a cidade, fugindo para a cidade dele. E lá está acontecendo uh, uh, também um caos. E uh, gostaríamos de saber uh, rapidinho o que está acontecendo lá. Rav Glitzstein, ele vai falar no hebraico e eu vou repetir, vou tentar fazer o objetivo bem claro. Rav Glitzstein, shalom ubrachá. שומעים אותך פה מברזיל, בבקשה, אתה יכול לספר בקיצור מה קורה אצלך. 
ערב טוב, שלום וברכה. אני אדבר בעברית, הוא דיבר באנגלית. אנחנו נמצאים בצ'רנוביץ, צ'רנוביץ זה נמצא 40 קילומטר מגבול רומניה. זה אזור שנקרא בוקווינה, מי שמכיר. והיום גרים פה בצ'רנוביץ. כן. אלפיים יהודים, היום גרים בצ'רנוביץ אלפיים יהודים, יש בית ספר, גן ילדים וסטודנטים. צ'רנוביץ בלייס ופי זה מערב אוקראינה, ליד גבול רומניה, יש פה שלוש מעברי גבול. החל מיום חמישי בבוקר, מאז שהתחילה המלחמה, אלפי אנשים בכלל ויהודים, כולם בורחים לאזור הזה, או לגבול של פולין, או לגבול של רומניה, הונגריה. ‫-אההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההה
Bom, ele disse igual que o outro rabino falou, que as cenas são igual que a gente está acostumado na época do Holocausto. Ele falou que ele tá, eles estão recebendo convites de comunidades de todo lugar, de Israel, de França, de Europa, de Berlim, para famílias vêm e a gente vai cuidar de vocês um mês, dois meses, quanto tempo precisa. Então, várias famílias estão saindo, mas os maridos, entre 18 e 60, não podem sair. Então, você vê o choro, as separações de famílias, parte indo para Israel, para Berlim, ou para Europa, ou França, e o, e o marido fica, o filho fica, e eles estão chorando, quem sabe o, o que vai ser o futuro. Muito, muito triste. אהההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההה
e conseguiu que eles podem passar sem passaportes, sem crianças órfãos, para eh, foram hoje da cidade dele eh, cruzar para a Romênia. Incrível. E de lá para Israel. Uau. בטיסה הזאת יהיו עוד הרבה מטוס של 300 איש, הרבה אנשים מכל שרוצים, שיכולים לצאת לארץ, יהיו בטיסה הזאת, טיסה זה יהיה שמדינת ישראל שולחת את המטוס להביא יהודים, ובאמת עכשיו אני מקבל את הוואטסאפים מכל הרבנים ששולחים משפחות אליי, עכשיו מסתובבים פה אלף יהודים שאנחנו דואגים להם לאכול ולישון באוניברסיטאות, כל ה... בתי הסטודנטים, המעונות, כולם הלכו, אני לקחתי אותם ומשכיב שם את כל היהודים שמגיעים, הם אוכלים בבית חב"ד, יש מישהו מטווח גדול, כל היום זה פתוח, באים אנשים ואוכלים והולכים, יושבים במעונות הסטודנטים, במלונות, בתים ששכרנו, והרבה... אמרת שישראל שלח מטוס להביא אנשים? מחר, ביום חמישי יגיע מטוס. אני יודע שכי ישראל את המנדנו מאביהו que vai chegar quinta-feira para levar a grupo de pessoas, e falou, agora tem uns mil pessoas circulando na cidade, esperando, entrando, saindo de outras cidades, e os hotéis que ele preparou, eles vêm lá para comer, para dormir, eles não têm o que fazer. Uau! Me chegou a Gvul, me chegou a Dion Hamishit a Gvul, mas ia como a Matosim. Quem chega quinta-feira para a fronteira da cidade dele vai conseguir no avião para Israel. יש הרבה, אנחנו גם משתדלים לעזור למי ש... כש... מי שיש לו בעיות עם הדרכון, שהוא לא יכול לעבור בגלל הצבא, גם משתדלים לעזור, זה לא לפרסומת כמובן, עם כל מיני דרכים אחרות, אם במקרים קשים מאוד, לא כל אחד אפשר, כי זה אלפים, אבל במקרים קשים... מה עם אוכל? יש אוכל, יש אוכל, איפה קוראים כל כך הרבה אוכל? אנחנו, בגלל שידענו שזה מה שיהיה, לפני שבועיים כבר התחלנו לקנות אוכל, מאות קילו. של תפוחי אדמה ואורז וגרצ'קה וקוסמת, פה זה מאוד פופולרי, ובשר, ידעתי שבקייב, כל הבשר שלנו מגיע מקייב, אז הגיע, הבאתי משאית עם חמש טון בשר ועופות, שיהיה להרבה זמן, שמנו מחסנים גדולים, מחסנים שלמים עם אוכל, אמרנו אם בעזרת השם יהיה טוב, אז יישאר לחלק ליהודים, אנחנו מחלקים כל הזמן, כל השנה. הייתי סבלי קומידה eles já se prepararam duas semanas atrás meu, e pegaram e levaram e guardaram grandes depósitos é, centenas de quilos de batata de arroz, outras coisas e falou, carne vem de Kiev então já vieram é, toneladas por caminhão de Kiev algumas semanas atrás e falou, a gente espera que tudo dá certo e vai sobrar e vão poder distribuir, mas por enquanto estão usando tudo isso Echmimani, Mimishalem, Echmimani כמו סיפרה, פאגה פטוליסטו. יהודים טובים, יהודים טובים שלוקחים כסף כל הזמן, יהודים טובים שמכירים אותי, יהודים אנחנו כל הזמן, אני 18 שנה פה, יש בעולם יותר מ-70 אלף יוצאי צ'רנוביץ. כמה 70 אלף? יוצאי צ'רנוביץ. כי בזמן המלחמת 41 היה פה 50 אלף, ואחרי זה הגיעו עוד יהודים. אז היהודים שיצאו מצ'רנוביץ הם מאוד אוהבים את העיר, זו עיר מאוד יפה, עיר מאוד של תרבות. אז אנחנו בקשר טוב עם היהודים של יוצאי צ'רנוביץ. ועכשיו שהיה את המלחמה אז שלחתי הודעות לכולם שעכשיו צריכים שהם גם יעזרו אנחנו תמיד פה בשבילהם צריכים שהם יהיו בשבילנו אז יהודים שלחו, שלחו הרבה, שולחים הרבה עזרה עכשיו הבעיה היא ברגע זה שבאמת לא חשבנו שעד כדי כך לקחנו מלון אחד ולקחנו אחרי זה חמש מלונות כבר צריך הרבה יותר ממה שחשבנו אבל ברוך השם מכירים אותי פה בעיר ונותנים לי בחשבון האשראי הגעתי למלון צריך לתת עשרים אלף דולר נתתי אלף מראש הם בטוחים שיהיה בסדר ואנחנו גם בטוחים שיהיה בסדר אני יודע שכי הייתה לה עד איזו אנוס כי תן סטנטה מיל ז'ודאוס כי אוריג'ן אה דה צ'ני דה אונג'ה ליטה בסידה די דרעי סמפרי טל פוטטו ואיפה אגורה אלי סטון אשודנו מויטו אלי פלו אלי קוניסידו לארט על עד איזו אנוס נותן מוטי קרדיטו אלי פוי פרו הוטל e ele achou que vai precisar um hotel, já tem mais de cinco. Então ele falou que ele botou é, mil dólares e tem né, crédito, as pessoas estão pagando e, e assim ele está pagando. Eu acabei de colocar agora mais três é, links no chat. É, o primeiro é direto daquele rabino que falou antes, o segundo é desse rabino aqui, o terceiro é do outro rabino em, 
em Odessa, pode escolher, tem outros sites também, mas eu é, não conheço se tudo são legítimas, essas três eu conheço, é, vou tentar colocar mais um. Então, quem Também, pode ajudar... A Tachamata acha Yom, a Rusim, Takfu et Babiar? Em Takfu, et a... Et a... Et a... Et a... Andarta, Andarta. Andarta, que é o Babiar. Não é o Babiar, é o Babiar, é o Kever. É o Andarta Lezecher Babiar. É o Liada Biana Televisia. כן, זה מאוד, אנשים מאוד מאוד, חבר'ה, בבית הכנסת היינו, אנשים מאוד 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 קשה להם, מאוד עצבנים על זה. הוא אומר שהוא uh, בא לנקות את ההיטלר, בפועל הוא עושה מה שהיטלר uh, בעצמו. ו- ויש לך ABC. גם קשר עם הרב של uh, בריאו לזר ממוסקו והרבנים מרוסיה? בסך הכל, אנחנו בקשר טוב. היום היה בזום, כל הרבנים ביחד. מוסקבה, ואנ... רוסיה ואוקראינה. ומה אמרו? הוא, הוא בן ערובה. אם הוא יגיד משהו, יקבל כדור בראש גם כן. אידיסי כי אוז'י תביא זום, כתוב לך בינוס דה אוקראינה, אידו, רוסיה, מה זה לא תפסנו. 